We gotta mm -hmm. know this by tomorrow. All right, guys. We're all staying at Ian's house. So you got through your CER training. How was your weekend out in the field, guys? Awesome. Comments, thoughts. I enjoyed it because I love to talk. So just that I only had to say hi, how are you was wonderful. How many people did you get scheduled? You know. Um, when I when I left on Saturday, she had eight or nine. Great. And where were you at? I was in Highwood at the most weirdest place. It was uh, like a flea market, but it was flea market type thing. Okay, great. How about you guys? Yeah, but the I'm, second day, nothing. Um, Nicole told me. I was at a Green Expo. Okay. So it was really nice. You know, it's a nice like um, you know natural deodorants were there <laughs> versus that were made by you know women in eastern India oh of cotton. Uh, they had a butcher guy there who can get you pasture eggs and hormone free beef oh, and right. so it was really nice. So that was nice. Um, no one could find a garbage can, that's fine. <laughs> like I, we were in plastic bottles, like our water bottles. I'm like, where's the garbage? And we're all like, mm. and I'm like, they oh, gotta be recycling at this place, you know, this yeah. event. Huh. Yeah. Of all the places. Yeah, so the first night was really just like a, a mixer, like for the chamber, giving out awards and stuff and letting vendors set up. So there were really no people. It was technically open to the public, but people, I mean, the vendors gotcha. weren't even there. So we walked around, talked to the vendors. They have spines. We didn't get anybody. That's okay. Um, at least we generated some interest. They were like, oh, what booth are you at? Blah, blah, whatever. Um, and we're seeing it through practice, which is never bad. Practice. Right, right. The next day, though, we got six people, three were unpaid just because of where it was held. It was held like a rec center. So like one lady was like, I just came for swimming lessons with my son. She literally had a towel right. on her kid, no keys. But she's still scheduled for her and, you know. She's so they're gonna pay in the office. Right, right, right. So just a reminder for you guys, avoid that like the plague. It's hard not to sometimes, but even so that's that's like, for me personally, I would've given a brochure. Here's a brochure, call them. Cause you schedule, what happens is if you schedule someone to pay in the office and they don't show, now when somebody else goes to schedule, that slot is taken. Wow. Uh, and they can't put someone in there, but their person's willing to pay the twenty dollars. Your okay. person didn't, and because they didn't pay the twenty, there's a much greater chance they won't show. So you took a spot that we could have put someone else in, so and then it ends up being an open spot. So you want to try to avoid that. I mean, you'll you'll once you guys won't have to worry about it because you're not CERs. But CERs, once they've been out there long enough, they'll start to get a feel of when to do it, when not to. But like three at, an, at, an, at one initiative, even if it's a gym or whatever, it's kind of a lot. It's like, okay, here's a brochure, guys. Go And, and some people, some of our, our top CERs, they, they don't push anyone or anything, but just the way they say it, the enthusiasm, whatever it might be, the urgency, um, they've shown you why this is so key for you to go in. They leave, they go get 20 bucks, and they come back. We had some and do that. That is great because they, are much more likely to show because they had to put it. Someone told me once, and, and, I, and I think this is very true, um, sales is nothing but a series of commitments. Make a commitment to have a conversation, then you make a commitment to go and get checked out, then you make a commitment to become a patient. It's just a series of commitments. So if you can add another commitment to the process, much better chance that they keep going to that next step. So they made another commitment because they left to get their money and came back. That's another commitment. So chances are much better to don't actually show. Makes sense. But anyways, I'm sorry. Continue with that. You, you had three. We did. We had three no pays. Three three paids. Um, I I tried to be useful by entertaining the little eight year old boy that was there because he was like, "Is my mom done yet?" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah. you get the flowers." <laughs> I was like, "Is that your mom from Mother's Day? You don't water it. What's your name? My name's Charlie." But through that conversation with Charlie, I found out that Charlie has Charlie. Charlie has a dad. Charlie has a sister. I was like, "Boom, boom add on, add on." Is what I was thinking of my Nice. Friend. So it was um, fun, but we actually had professional people come up to us. A dentist approached me before the show even opened and was like, are you are you, are you you ready to take people? And I was like, no, not yet, because Diane wasn't there yet. I was like, no, it's not, you know, it's before nine. I, I don't know, do you want to come back? So, but she was like, I'm a dentist. And she literally did the position. She was, so I'm like this. All day long. And she was, so my back really hurt. So I was like, okay, I'll <laughs> come back. That's so, funny. Yeah. Um, so my, my two events, uh, one was at Walmart and one was at a mall, and I found it discouraging. Like, Walmart was rough. Was it? See, um, I think Walmart's pretty new for us. It was just starting to get in there. So the re nice. Rejection after rejection. Like, people not even acknowledging that you are a human being. It was rough. Like, I didn't, I wasn't a part of it, but just mm -hmm. observing. Right. And watching it affect the CERs and not affect the CERs and how to... Did it impact some? Did their body language For go? Sure. Yeah, see, and that's that's why I'm always like, find your island. 
Because yeah. if you let it impact, we have a story, um, real, real quick, and then I'll you know, yeah. let you continue. Yeah. We have a story, uh, we're doing a Sam's Club. One of the teams is doing a Sam's Club. And one of the guys you're going to meet is Steve. Actually, you probably saw Steve in the uh, Top Performers video. Yeah, he's, he's real him. clean cut guy and more. everything. And, yeah, um, yeah, built. <laughs> uh, very healthy, good posture, right? Um, so Steve, he was talking to his team. He's one of our regionals. And he was talking to his team, and they're like, yeah, it's really slow here at Sam's Club. We're not really getting anyone. And da 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 da. We have zero for today. And he's like, no way, man. No, you guys are not leaving. I'm going to come show you. So he drives over there. He goes out there, and he goes, we're not leaving until we schedule five. He schedules five in like an hour and a half. Wow. Okay? That just is his because option. he didn't get discouraged when people walk by. And, saw, and, and no matter how many times you tell people, it's hard not to. Wow. But you have to. It's not, it's not really that hard. Once you get in that zone, it's very easy to not be impacted by other people. Okay? Right. But until you get there, it takes a couple months of really just focusing and breaking through. But once you've done that for even sometimes just a month or so, where you're like, oh, I'm not going to let it get me down, I'm not going to let it get me down, you're fine. But if you don't push yourself through that first part of the process, you never get there, and you're always going to find yourself, and you know, you're going to work some of these places where, for whatever reason, you know, she went to one place and she got eight people. Awesome. You're at another place where you're not getting anyone. It's going to happen. It's, it rotates around. You know, we made we just started working some of the Walmarts. We made a set, oh Walmart, maybe it's not the best place, or maybe we need to do it differently, or maybe we need to set up in a different spot. Okay, great. But you're gonna have to you know get the zeros and the low numbers to find that out. So anyways, okay, so continue on, what else happened? Well it's just interesting to me because ninety nine percent of people were really bothered by us being there. And it's you know, it was just so different than a green event or um, yeah, it was just interesting. So Where were you guys located? Um, you walk into Walmart, and then you turn left, you go past all the cashiers, and then we were in the corner, so people were on their way. They were ending their shopping process uh -huh. on uh -huh. a corner, leaving. But we were, I just feel like, <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I've done a lot of sales, and I've never felt, uh, I've never experienced people not feeling like. It's funny that you've got that, that really good at Walmart. Like, and even the way that people looked at Walmart, so unhealthy looking. Uh -huh. But then I did a mall, and um, the people just looking healthier and, and being open to us. It, yeah. it was a different, totally different experience. So like a 180. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I, I look forward to the, the vets are awesome. I mean, you know, like the greens for people. Summer's a great time because we get into all the like once a year, events, yeah. all the outdoor stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's always a trade-off. Some of the street festivals, people are drunk. Will they remember their appointment? You know, you have, to, you have to use your judgment. Okay, if they're really drunk, don't schedule them because they're not going to remember that they're supposed to go in. You now, but, so there's that line. Right. Um, but it's just, there's just so many more people that we can touch and help and, you know, and then we'll come over and have a conversation. So it's very nice. It's, it's funny that she was uh, saying you got that because I used to go to Dominic's before they closed and they were there, and mm -hmm. at that time, you know, I was going to my own chiropractor. I never got annoyed. I said, thank you, but no, thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. You know, they're always so polite. I mean, no matter where I go, no matter what you're selling, because being a salesperson, too, and you, too, you always just say thank you or no thank you. You don't have to be a bitch. You're going to find, you're going to find, you know, different demographics and where you go, different places, and people behave differently, and it's just, that's part of the process. Okay. I did have some of that, though, Renee, and I did talk. Some people didn't, like, look at me. You know, like right. acknowledge me. You know, somebody walk by and I go, "Hi, how are you, folks?" Today, and they or they'd either keep walking or one lady. I was like, "Hi, how are you?" And she went, <laughs> I kept walking. I was like, "And those are the only person." I smile, thinking, "Those are the only people we can service, right?" Those are the only ones. Do you the know, ones that don't talk? Do you know Monica? Yeah, you sure, sure. Well, I mean, she is a rock star at Walmart. So because, Steve's your regional, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know Steve. I mean, I. Um, but anyway, so Monica is such a, she's so funny because she, she would, people would totally ignore her at Walmart constantly and she would just make a joke <laughs> and she caught a lot of them and I was like, I'm super impressed. Where the other one was a bit like, um, let them go. You know, yeah. Monica was like, I didn't, and yeah. <laughs> she greets, she, she's pretty good about greeting everyone. Oh yeah. yeah she, she's real like. She's funny. Oh. I heard she just talks. <laughs> she's one she, yeah, oh, yeah, a lot of our, obvious. a lot of our, uh, our newer people have been some of our top performers coming out. Um, they're fresh, they're whatever it is. You know, they don't they don't know 
some of the people that if you've been here for a while and you go up and down and you see the rises and falls and you've been doing it for you get a little uh, it's like when I did comedy you've done the, the pitch so many times you just kind of lose that energy you don't realize that's why it's important on a team to have you know your new people and your your people that are seasoned and been here for a while you want that whole mixture so they bring that energy to the team and, and it's contagious then they work with someone who's been here for a while that person can teach them, hey, here's how you can even improve your skill set and improve the conversation. And at the same time, the new person gets their energy up for the rest of the team. So it's, it's very helpful. Yeah. I still felt that team, team though. I mean, yeah. I, I get along with, with Marla really, really good, obviously, and Diane, too. But when I went to show up, I met Mikey before during the interview process. So I knew that CER on uh -huh. Friday. But then he's a young kid. He's still fun. Um, but then... I met Diane P, who is been around for a yep. while and is a top performer. Yep. And when I went to leave, she was like, "Okay, thank you so much, sweetie." She's like, "For coming," and hugged me. I was like, "When does that happen at work?" I was like, "Thank you." I'm like, I work for Cairo One now. Uh, yeah, I'm like, this, yeah, there's it's no. Very focused on that. It's very good. I'm glad you guys got to experience that. So. Yeah, yeah we, I hugged everybody. I, I'm a huggy person. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huggy person. Oh, you're not? So I'm like, oh my god, no. But it I'm seems like, like you are. Y'all are huggy it's people. All if you hug, okay, I'll hug you back. I'm like, I hug too. I was hugging all the people saying I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well let's let's jump into this, guys. Um, did your CER training? Congratulations on doing that. Now we're in event development training. Right. This Yay. is this is where you want to be. Right. You excited? Uh, yeah, so you've been excited. kind of. How was last week? Were you kind of getting a little anxious about? Okay, when yes. do we get to get into yeah. our thing? Right. Yeah. yeah. We understand. Um, this is your binder, significantly bigger than your other binder, as you'll notice. If you look at the front, you have your little welcome page. The next page has your schedule. We're a little behind today. We should be able to catch back up on it. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. Okay. But this is a schedule that we'll be following for this training. Okay, so tomorrow you're actually going to be out in the field shadowing. Has everybody heard from the regional about being connected with someone, an FDEV person? You have not. No. And your regional is? Diane Serta. Diane Serta, and you have not either? Well, I mean, I've talked to Steve quite a few times, but as You haven't heard anything about going out with no. someone tomorrow, have you? I saw her today, so yeah. So you are, who are you going out with? I'm, I think Nicole. No, oh, Nicole, okay. Because you're with, uh, or Kathy. Who, yeah, who's, who else, I'm trying to think who else is on your team. You're with Nicole Zanza, right? Yes. Yeah, so Kathy, so it could be Kathy. Okay, so you're hooked up. So we got to get the other, you two hooked up. Because um, we want to make sure you go out with someone and you get to shadow them tomorrow. Okay? So this is just your schedule, so you have that. And if you go to a couple pages to page five, what this is, is this tells you where everything is. This binder. It's not meant just to be, oh, you go through it and you're done. There's a lot of information in here that's a good resource for you to go back to. Some of the stuff as we go through it, we're not even going to touch upon it. Let me talk about it very briefly. We're going to talk about a lot of things. And there's a, maybe, a, there's like a you know, five-page tip sheet in here on how to set up and organize workshops. And we'll touch upon it a little bit, but it's up to you to then, when you're scheduling workshops, to then go back to it and go into more detail. Does that make sense to you guys? So a lot of the stuff in here is meant to be a resource. So you want to make sure you take good care of this binder. You don't get this binder, throw it in your car, throw a TV on top of it, a bunch of other stuff, and it breaks apart. You want to go, okay, here's my binder. This is my resource. Um, because unlike CERs who go and do the same thing every day, you guys don't. You may go out and go, okay, today I'm going to be focused mostly on workshops. Tomorrow I'm going to be focused mostly on running some of the reports i got to run. Next week, I'm going to be focused on what we call staples. Those are initiatives, events that we get a lot, right? Those are regular places that we go to. Okay, we'll talk more about that. Does that make sense to you guys? So there might be something that you learn in training that you don't actually do for a while. You might not do to the end of this month. For example, there's something called reconciliation, which you'll learn how to do. But at the end of every month, you have to reconcile everything. We're not going to do it till the end of May. So. What are the odds that you're going to remember exactly how to do it? Slim, right? So you have your binder as a resource. Oh, here's, here's the process. Here's how I do it. Okay? So make sure you take good care of this binder. Make sense, guys? Okay? And so this checklist is so you can find everything very easily. That's all it is. So you can go, oh, okay. Uh, we did Outlook training. I, I could really brush up on that. That happens to be a side packet in one of the pockets. Um, you're like, oh, you know what? Uh, workshops. I really want to look up workshops and check on that. 
you can go down and see that if you go under initiative specifics, right? See the second one there is workshops defined, page 13. So you know I go to page 13 and that's where it starts talking about workshops. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's just meant to help you out. And it even tells you what day you go over it. Okay? At some point we're going to have tabs I'm in this binder. I'm not blocking your No, you're fine. Are you sure? I keep thinking okay. I checked it. You're fine. Okay. okay. Do you have any questions on the schedule or questions on this topic list before we get started? Are we going to review these topics? Yep, we're going through all of them. Okay. And it tells you what day you go over it to. Okay, because my biggest concern with this training is to kind of learn what to present to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, do I present a workshop to, the, to this company? Do I present a customer appreciation or an employee appreciation? What? Do I present a screening to them? Sure, sure. Yeah, we're going to go over all that. Okay? So if you guys are ready, uh, go to page 9. In each section before you start it, it has an overview. Right? So it tells you what we're going to be studying in that section. Okay? So what we want to do first is, is let's talk about CER training. Why do you guys think we had you go through CER training? So we know what to expect when we're on the outside and what they go through every day and why we're putting these um, events together. Yeah. Why is it important to have a quality initiative? If you have a poor initiative, if you go, well, let's just schedule an initiative at a dry cleaners. They don't see anybody. You know, you talk to, we all talked about team a little bit earlier, right? You guys said, it's a really great team. It is. If you schedule initiatives that, quite frankly, just suck, they can't help anyone company can't move forward and they can't bonus on top of it all. So they're going to be frustrated because they have targets they have to hit. Well, I can't hit my target if I'm going to initiatives that don't have any customers that are interested. Okay. At the same time, if they don't do their job, you guys can't touch people. Right? Because you can set up great initiatives, great events, and they go and it's like, well, you know, they just kind of hung out or they showed up late or whatever it is. So it's very, very tight team dynamics. Make sense? So it's very helpful for you to understand what they go through. And you can have that on your mind when you're scheduling it. Okay? You can speak to it. Plus you can describe to anyone you're talking to what it is that they do out there. Because they're going to ask you, well, what is it, when you bring your people in, what are they going to be doing? How's that going to look? Well, here's how it's going. I've actually done it. So I can tell you. Make sense? Okay. What else? What other reasons do you think we would have to go through CER training? Well, I mean, Gina made a good point. We were talking about this earlier. If one of our CERs get sick, we can jump in and do their job. And we will want to do that. <laughs> Marla has been doing that for a while now. She's been going in and helping out, screening people and stuff. Uh, the, the, that team is, is a little, we got some more CERs coming in for them, but they just had to hit a spot where, for whatever reason, they lost several CERs at the same time. You know, in sales it happens, and when that happened, uh, it made it a little harder on them to, to have people cover all the events that Marla was scheduling. So she said, well, I'll come and I'll work some of the events as well. So great point. Okay. So yeah, you can relate and understand their role. You can, again, fully comprehend the need to book events with day one potential, right? Be able to cover an event, right? You maintain the brand. We were talking about this. You ever been somewhere? You're out somewhere at like a street festival or something, and you go over and you want to talk to some company, and, and there's there's like four people there, and three of them are already talking to someone. And so you go to that fourth person, you're like, excuse me, I have some questions. They go, oh, I don't do that. They'll help you. Does that take you off? What do you mean you don't do that? Why are you here then? We don't want our customers to have that experience. So you need to be able to speak to them too, and you need to be able to say the script as well. Make sense? And better report with the CERs. Just, just, just gives you a better relationship with them. You guys are in tune more. You're speaking the same language. Right? Okay. Administrative tasks, real quick, guys. We're going to have you fill this out. If you go to your next page, it tells you how to order business cards here. So what we're going to have you do is go ahead to your right is the business card form. We're going to fill this out right now, and then I'll turn them into HR for you. And how this works is um, hopefully you'll have them by the end of the week. Doesn't always happen that way. Might not be until early next week. But in some cases, we've been able to have them for you by Thursday or Friday of the week that you order, which is nice. We want to get those.
for you as soon as possible. So we used to do them at the end of training, and then it was like, okay, well now I gotta wait like two weeks to get them. So we try and get them for you sooner rather than later. For the authorized signature, don't sign there, I'll sign that. And for type name, don't sign there, I'll sign that. Just fill out the uh, name, title, event development representative. Put down your cell phone. And then the address you want to choose for it is corporate. And put down the corporate address, which is on the card here beneath. 2625. You don't want to put your personal address there. You use a corporate address. Yeah, the 2625 Butterfield Road. training room. It's your entire team, F dev team. And here's the big thing, is be prepared to meet after that with just your team, just your region. All the regions meet afterwards. It's just a convenient time to do it, because otherwise, if they schedule another time, you know, especially if you're working northwest, northeast, and you got to drive, okay, now you got to drive all the way down for two meetings a week, three meetings a week, that's a hassle. Try and consolidate it, okay? And make sure you have your home office set up and ready to go, guys, because you're really you're going to be working from home, so you want whatever you need there to be effective. Um, it can be helpful to have a fax machine if you don't, or be able to fax. You know, it's still surprising, but there are some places that still don't. I don't have a fax, phone. You know, you don't have a phone? Yeah, sure. Um, then what do you do? You know, try PDF, see if that works for you. There I can scan. Issues. 
can what? I can scan. Scan, yeah, scan and PDF, see if that works for you. But there's still a few places that go, well, you have to fax. So you just need to hook up with somebody, I need to or something can fax or something. Yeah, something like that. I could pay. You know? And it depends. Some of the bit it depends on where you're at. Some businesses, some regions don't really need to fax it out, but some regions fax are kinda heavy. So it's just it's just very so I just want to prepare you as much as possible for what you're gonna experience. But have your home office set up so you don't have distractions, you don't have things like that. You know, have you guys who's worked from home before? You know, oh, so you already know, right? Yeah, your system. I'm Turn sure. off the TV. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Right. Get out of here. <laughs> Once again, just to remind you guys the four stages of learning. What you're going to learn here, you got to go out and put to use. If you don't, you're not going to remember it. You won't retain that information, and you're going to go back to consciously and consciously. Okay. normally be a break, but we're not going to take a break. We don't need a break right now. We're okay. big girls. So what is event development? I mean, these are the places we've worked with before, right? Just just a few of them. Obviously, Dominix is no longer around. That was, a, that was kind of a hit. There's a lot of different organizations and companies we work for. Well, what are the events? If you go to page 13, what are the events? We call them initiatives. You guys have heard us use the term initiative before, right? So from here in, we're going to call them initiatives. That's what we're talking about. So the initiatives we have are screenings, right? That's when we go out there and our CERs screen people, and that can happen anywhere, and it happens at all of our initiatives, right? We screen at every single place we go to, whether it's a workshop, whether it's a health fair, whether it's just a screening. But when we say just a screening, we mean not you know, a, a health fair or workshop. So screening is usually going to occur, you know, at, at some kind of staple event. So that term staple, we say staple, once you've gotten in with some company, okay, and you start to go there regularly, then it becomes what we call a staple. So Sam's Club is a staple. It's a place we go to a lot. It's a regular place. Even if we're just there once a month, it's still a staple because we go there repeatedly. Other items that aren't staples would be, for example, a street fest, Roscoe Street Fest. What about Retro on Roscoe? It only happens once every year for a couple days. So that's not a staple. That's an annual event. It's not a health fair or workshop, so it's still considered a screening. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. And you may want to write these down just no. so you refer to them. Okay. I missed that. I was writing down different types of events at the same exact time. No, you're fine. So initiatives, there are three, three different types. types. Yeah, the it's screenings, the health fairs, the workshops, the purple walls. Okay. Yep. And then um, a screening can be either at a stable okay. or it could be an event that's, that's just, it's not a stable, but it's not a health fair or workshop. So like you're saying, like, uh, like Retro on Roscoe okay. or Market Days in Halstead or wherever that is, right? Okay. How else? Yep. Speaking of market days, do you guys do market days at the schools? That's a good one. Depends on the area. You just have to check into that. Okay. If I'm blocking your view at any time, let me know, guys. It's tricky. I, it's really hard for me not to be moving. I am so used to moving around, and I can't do that in this room. Go ahead. Uh, quick question about, you know, you guys about how to navigate your chamber of commerce. Um, I'm a member of a couple Chamber of Commerce, and I'm pretty involved in one. I'm like, I'm an article committee, and I'm a new ambassador for them, so I welcome companies as they come in. So welcome, being a, an ambassador is pretty good, because then I know what to do. Right. I'm one of the first people we meet. So, but, um, like, just do it the way you normally do it. Like, send them mass emails, tell them what you're doing now, blah, 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 kind of find out about their companies, and, you know, see what they do to kind of match up what initiatives I could. Yeah, we're going to talk about how we, how we yeah. contact you. We'll get there in a little. Well, that's more so. We'll start that more so tomorrow. Well, good question. Okay. But we'll, we'll get to all that. So, yeah. Very good question. Um, we like to do more individualized tests. Touching. We are not big on mass email. Do you, when you get a mass email, do you even read it half the time? Not usually. 80% of the time? Probably not. So we like to reach out individually. Does that make sense? I find it just to be a lot more effective. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use the same script. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the difference? But you just don't go, hey, dear sir, customer, whoever you are, dear manager, right? You want to individualize it and, and be sending it to each person individually as opposed to big lists and everyone's BCC in or something. Okay. Okay. Um, 
health fairs. A health fair is simply a place where there's going to be other vendors to it. Right? It's set up specifically for people's health, for them to come and learn about. All right? And then workshops. In workshops, we also do corporate wellness plans. When you do a workshop, you want to think about doing multiple workshops for an organization. Not just, okay, we're going to come and do one workshop. You want to go, let's put together a whole plan for you. We have a blog. Okay, you guys can sign up for that. Um, the Be Well blog. So if you Google that, it comes up. You can, you can sign up to receive that blog. But we can provide content from our blog to their blog. And there are some organizations that their, their health newsletter is simply our blog. Feed it into it. We can set that up. Okay. Um, so these are things you can talk about when you're meeting with them. But we can also create content for their employee newsletter. What I'll do for you is I'll stand over. I'm trying to angle this a little bit more. Nice. <laughs> Not blocking you too much. And if you find it's easier to slide I somewhere can, else, feel free. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. But if you if you decide that's easier for you at some point, you can. The rest of the week we'll be back in the training room. It's just today because of the meeting and because CERs have one last day of training. Okay. So then we'll be back in there and have our space. So you guys, I mean, you, you work with us, you do business to consumer. CERs do business to consumer. You guys are a business to business, right? So when you're doing business to business, there's two parts to it. One part is screening for their customers. So you are screening for their customers. Well, you can do that at a health fair. They might have health fairs for their customers. A lot of annual events, like we talked about, street festivals, golf fundraisers are big. And as you're here for a while, you start to learn about different chiropractors, different doctors, and you're going to do some of them are really into golf. And so when you're talking to people, you know, CRs are scheduling people, they may go, hey, you know what? It's, it's a 10-mile drive for you. It's not as close as this other clinic is, but you know, you're talking about really wanting to do this to get your golf game back on track. This chiropractor is like a golfing pro. You know, He's just really into golf, so he'll be able to tell you exactly what you need to know, I'll have that conversation with you. So it could be advantageous for you to go see that chiropractor. Okay. And then there's staples that we talked about. And then you might have business to consumer expos, like maybe the auto show. Make sense? Okay. When you're doing more of the workshop management part of your job, you're doing business to business sales still, but now you're doing business to your employees. Instead of for their customers, it's for their employees. Okay? These are some of the places we've done workshops at. IDOT is a big one. Ford is a big one. Okay? We do a whole plan for Ford. We're there every couple months. Okay? So when you're scheduling presentations and workshops, you're doing screenings for their employees, they're going to do workshops. You might do screenings in their break rooms. So like, let's say this was a break room, we might have someone set up in here, okay? Might do staff meetings. We had, we hooked up with H&R Block for a while. They came to a couple of the staff meetings and presented, and then they were in an office till 11 a.m. So for a couple hours after the meeting, in case anyone wanted to come in and have their taxes done, okay? And then there's also business to business expo. So that might be like a hardware expo, where people who own hardware stores or work in that industry come and we screen there. Or it could be you know, a construction type of expo. So you know that, wow, a lot of business people that come here work in construction. Do you guys do the restaurant? Mm -hmm. We might. I couldn't possibly tell you everything we did. There's so many things that we do and try out. So You can check it in the system, though. Mm -hmm. and you'll learn how to, how to do that. One thing you should do is when you do a health fair, you should think about segueing that into a workshop. So remember I talked about how I did the Bridgestone Tire Fest. You guys remember that? I went and did the health fair at the Bridgestone Tire Fest. That's where um, Mindy, the guy was, the, they were handing out dots. Remember when I talked about that? When I went to the ladies room. But the guy who was it. walking around and he just wanted dots. The oh, health fairs are the yes, right? yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. That good. was at Bridgestone Health Fair. Right. Okay? So if you're the ad dev person for that, what you want to do is you want to talk to whoever, you, whoever brought you in. Whatever your contact is there, you're like, hey, so I noticed, you know, we signed up five people here today. We got a lot of questions from people about certain conditions. You know, we got questions about 
fatigue, uh, we got questions about, you know, carpal tunnel syndrome. What I'd love to do is come in and do one of our workshops for you. We talked about that before today at workshops. That is a great opportunity to do that. Use those health fairs to segue into workshops so we can kind of get to be the only person there as opposed to having to share with other people. Especially because sometimes you're going to share with other chiropractors. Does that make sense?